The Lord of the Rings Rings of Power Season 2 just came out a few days ago and it's all really hot right now around the news and stuff. And when I say hot, I don't mean it's like super awesome getting a fame and acclaim all over the place. I mean hot as in it's a steaming pile of dog poop. Oh boy, man, is it bad? Yes, it's bad. Is it worse than the first season that was really bad as well? Yes, it is also worse than the first season. But I'm going to get into the bad stuff. But before I get into the bad stuff, let me uh, start out on a good note and tell you about the things that I enjoy about the show. So I thought the CGI and visual effects were amazing. Like they were top tier. They were really, really good. I was very impressed by them. And also not only that, I also really liked the direction and the overall cinematography of the whole show. Uh, which includes like lighting, um, <clears throat> camera work, all that kind of stuff. Not only that, I also really enjoyed the sound design and music. I thought it fit really well with the show and I thought it added a lot to the, the suspense and the emotions of the scenes. Talking about some scenes of the show, I also really liked every scene that Sauron was a part of. I actually really like his character. I think I think he's actually the only character that I do like in the show. I think he's actually the only character that's good. Ironically, he's the villain and he's the bad guy, <laughs> but uh, I really liked him in pretty much every scene that he was in and I also liked the beginning scene, which is like it opens up and gives you a bit of context and background of the entire show. I thought it did a really good job of that. Now let's get on to some of the bad stuff and boy oh boy there's a lot of steaming pile of poop in here and we gotta wade through the poopy waters to tell you about all the bad stuff that I got. I got notes here too. That's I got notes here. That's how much I uh, that's how much stuff I found that I didn't like. <laughs> so let's read some of my notes here. <laughs> okay, first of all, uh, Sauron is like this. I'm not super great at the lore of Lord of the Rings, but he's basically, in my uh, understanding, is he is a Maiar spirit or some. He's a spirit, right? He's an immortal being uh, that's transcended through the ages or whatever and takes a uh, a physical form every once in a while. And when he gets defeated. Uh, he, he just goes back into the spirit world or whatever and comes back like avatar stuff um, So basically in the beginning a little bit of spoilers, but not really uh, I, I just said I like the beginning I like the beginning sequence because it gives you a background of the show But I also don't like it because for some reason Sauron just gets like he gets basically he gets uh, betrayed uh, in the beginning uh, when I say betrayed, I mean like he just gets stabbed all around by his orc uh, minions or whatever and the guy uh, is standing next to him. Basically, he gets betrayed and he gets absolutely wrecked. Okay, this guy, this first of all, this guy is an immortal being that cannot be killed. Only his spirit can be thrown out of the physical body. He just has to get another physical body. But besides that, uh, besides the lore and stuff, maybe they were trying to go off the lore a bit. But if he was Sauron from the books that Tolkien wrote, and if he was Sauron from the Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Hobbit, or not the Hobbit, but the Lord of the Rings trilogy, he would absolutely be fine. Like, he wouldn't have gotten wrecked as he did in that beginning sequence. Like, he got absolutely wrecked by this orcs that, that are just like mob characters that get killed off all the time. He's basically an angel in our, uh, in our world. Uh, he just can't die. It just doesn't make sense. Anyway, moving on. Next, I have a, a, a big thing I don't like about the whole desert scene, which is like includes uh, the, the old guy with the beard. Apparently, we all think he's Gandalf. It hasn't been confirmed yet. Uh, him and Amori, I think is her name uh, of the, the Harfoots. So it's Gandalf and the Harfoots. I'm going to call it that. Uh, basically, the walking in the desert just takes so much time. And, you know, only three episodes have come out so far as it was a three episode premiere out of a total of eight episodes. And basically, my whole thing with the show is that it's like, it drags on like the pacing is really bad it's very slow nothing happens in the three episodes that I watched pretty much okay I'm like what is gonna happen in the next five episodes I hope something good because what I saw in the trailer really piqued my interest I thought the trailer looked amazing I thought the the it looked awesome it looked like Lord of the Rings so what they couldn't fit in three one-hour episodes uh, Lord of the Rings can fit in one movie and make it really good and the pacing correct. I don't know how these uh, new uh, Amazon or whatever, whoever it is that makes the makes the thing, Rings of Power, I don't know how they can f mess this up so bad, but they did. So getting back to Amori, she's supposed to be like the comic relief, right, of the show. Like she says these jokes or whatever and, and she breaks the, breaks the suspense of the show and it just falls really, it falls really flat in my opinion and it, and it just ends up being really cringy and I don't like it at all. It's it's pretty bad. It's just really, it's hard to explain. You have to watch the show and you'll see what I'm talking about. 
Yeah, so the whole the whole uh, Gandalf and the Harfoots and the desert scenes are all boring with their dialogue, and, and I find myself almost dozing off. I, I was actually, like, holding my phone like this in my bed watching, and I was, like, like actually dozing off, okay? And and uh, not only that, you know how, like, in the iPhone, I have an iPhone, but the newer iPhones, you can swipe out of the app and still be able to watch the show, which is called picture-in-picture -picture mode. And so, basically, I was, like, doing that. Like, I was so bored with what was going on that I just had to, while I was watching it, I was swiping out and looking at Instagram or whatever, scrolling through Instagram while I was listening to the show. I was so bored, I couldn't stay on it. It, it didn't grab my attention. Like, in comparison, when I uh, when I watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy, uh, I, marathoned it really, I marathoned it recently, and I didn't swipe out of the app at all the whole time. Like, I was completely glued to the screen. And I've seen that thing a hundred, hundreds of times, okay? So there's a start, you can see stark difference right there. Again, the progression is really slow and it's boring. Okay, really quick note, uh, it's a little getting a little nitpicky here, but the, the Elvish language and the Mordor black speech that they use, it just, they use it and then they combine it with like English and stuff and it just, uh, it's cool. They did that in the, in the uh, Lord of the Rings stuff as well, but it just seems like why like the whole thing is in english anyway just do it in english or at least have the elves speak only elvish and the humans speak only uh english and then the orcs in mordor only speak a mordor black speech or whatever it's called i think that would have been really good or just keep it all in english just be consistent um they did that with the hobbit i believe like the orcs were speaking uh the orc language which is good i thought that was cool so that's just a nitpicky thing i have about it okay let's talk about galadriel the whole thing with Galadriel is like in the first season, she was like an epic warrior, right? She was like fighting, da, 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 da. but now she's like a, like very reserved and stuff in the second season. Like kind of like, a, she kind of is, I can see what they're trying to do, that she's kind of becoming the person she is in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, because uh, she has the like the ring now, a little bit, I mean, it's not, not really a spoiler, but she has the ring or whatever, one of the rings. And uh, basically what I'm trying to say is that Galadriel uh, has very bad, weak dialogue. And I feel like the only thing she says most of the time is that it's my mission to destroy Sauron and I must destroy him. And that's all she says like the entire time. And it's kind of boring to me. Also, speaking of Galadriel, for some fucking weird reason, she just won't say who Hellbrand Hellbrand uh, from the first season, spoiler of the first season, Hellbrand equals Sauron, basically. He was revealed to be Sauron, uh, and she just, for some reason, won't say that Hellbrand is Sauron. Uh, to the Elven King and to, like, Elrond and to everybody else, she won't say it. I don't know why. She spends, like, a half an hour, like, he is evil. He is the one we've been looking for. While, like, crying or whatever, and, like, he... Who he the, the king even gets like frustrated. He's like, what dude? What is what is his name? Spill it. Spill the beans. Say the name. And then she finally says it. Sauron. She finally says the name, and I'm like, oh my fucking god! Thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you, thank you for letting her say it. Uh, so changing gears for a minute here. Uh, she, they also like for some reason they introduce Durin, who's uh, Durin's wife. Uh, Durin is the the prince of the dwarf uh, kingdom. His wife is that lady in the first season. So they introduced Durin's wife in the second season as some kind of magical stone singer. Like uh, there's a scene where like the, the lights close, uh, like they had like an earthquake or something, the lights close in the, in the I'm avoiding spoilers, uh, in, the t in, the, in the cave or whatever. And uh, they, uh, so yeah, so like she starts singing, right? To, and then it's just, just it's like the force it's like that scene in the acolyte that everybody hates where uh they just start chanting like all is the one one is the two for the force be with you or whatever i didn't watch the show i, I couldn't watch it uh that that's what they were doing basically in this show i'm like oh my god they're pulling a disney <laughs> so yeah that that was a weird that was weird i don't know why that was also random note side note here but there is an old ass elf like there's an old elf in the show why i don't know because i'm pretty sure that in tolkien's universe elves don't age unless they take the unless they uh get like renounce their immortality which i believe they can do if they when they marry like a mortal man or whatever like in lord of the rings i think that lady i forget her uh, our, what's her name elrond's daughter um, yeah, she gave up her mortality so she could, uh, or immortality so she could become mortal and live a full life with Aragorn or whatever. But in this show, 
for some reason they have an old ass elf. He's like 75, like in it, like actual, like physically 75. But elves don't age. They, uh, in my understanding, they stop aging at like uh, when they become mature or like 30 or 50 or whatever. They don't age past that. So that was really weird. Um, I don't know what they were trying to do there. Uh, he just, I don't know. He just ended up being as like a side character, to be honest. But maybe he's going to be a, a more prevalent character in the coming episodes. I don't know. Only time will tell. So uh, some thoughts here. Overall, some closing thoughts. Uh, overall boring. The pacing is slow. The writing is pretty bad. Um, the acting is good, but the writing is bad is what I'm trying to say. It feels also it feels like the show. I'm, I'm, I think everybody else has been saying this, too, but it feels like the show is constantly telling you exactly what's happening every inch of the way, like what is happening all over the place, why it's happening and when it's happening, how it's going to happen. Like the, the characters just speak like they just spill it all out. And it, and it makes it feel like the, sh the they're trying to hold your hand, basically. Like the show is holding your hand, like it won't leave anything up for the for the viewer to make up for themselves and, and figure out what's going to happen like they do in Lord of the Rings. They do a really good job of that, in my opinion. OK, this OK, this next thing is insane. This is my worst thing that I this is the thing I hate most about the show. And it is the fact that for some reason, these people want to uh, have the viewer and the audience sympathize with the orcs. So what I mean by that is like there's a scene where like they're talk there's an orc guy that's talking to the leader in Mordor and he's like, oh, we, we all are safe now in Mordor. Why do we have to go fight a war? We're safe here. And the guy's like, we must fight the war or whatever. And uh, basically, like the scene ends with the leader walking away this way and it just stays pan. It just stays on the orc guy. And then it starts to pan. And in the background, there's a female orc with a orc baby. And the orc's baby is like, wah, wah. And it's just like, cradling the baby. And he's like going over to her and like doing this, like, like he's a loving husband. And <laughs> it's like a orc, it's like a happy orc family. Like, what are you talking about? In, in Tolkien's universe, the orcs are act are the orcs. I just got to calm myself here. I'm getting worked up. <laughs> the orcs are a ma malevolent, evil, male only race of goblins. They are pure evil. OK, that is it's it's the fight between good and evil. There's no in between. There's no uh, gray area. It's not black. It's just not gray. It's black and white. And this show is trying to make you sympathize with the orcs. Like, what? No, they're evil. And uh, there is no uh, female. I'm sorry. There's no female orcs in the Tolkien universe. They are a pure, evil, malevolent ra male race of goblins. That's how I believe that's how Tolkien portrays them in the books. Finally, I have one more thing, and uh, it's not a spoiler, but I have to talk about it. I'm going to avoid everything. I'm going to avoid using pronouns to uh, to avoid spoilers here of this character, but basically they killed off a character in episode three uh, randomly without any. Well, they did have an explanation, but the explanation was like, I can kind of see what where they were going with the explanation, but it was it was still pretty bad. They killed off the character. I'm not going to I'm not going to say who they are. I'm not going to use their pronouns because that'll give it away. But basically it just comes out of nowhere like they're dead. Like, what the fuck? Like they're just dead. And then when I looked it up later, apparently the actor um, just said they weren't coming back to the show. So I can give the the showrunners, I can give the show a pass for that because that's something they, they cannot control and that sucks for them. And I feel bad that they had to go through that, but they did. The, I can see they did the best they could with what they got. But uh, I think they could have done a little bit better, though, with the, the whole thing. They kind of put it in like a one frame and it was just it was just, it was a disaster. I think they were rushed. I could tell they were rushed in production and I, I, I'm pretty sure they could have done a better job. But anyway, uh, that's the end of my rant about Lord of the Rings, uh, Rings of Power season two. Uh, if you guys want to check it out, go check it on Amazon Prime. It's got three episodes so far that came out on August 29th. There's five more episodes left, so maybe it'll change my mind. I'm going to watch the rest of it. Oh, my God, dude, I, I don't I don't want to, but I'm going to so I can just, you know, make another video for more content for you guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Make sure to smash that like button if you like the video and hit subscribe. Uh, we passed 1000 subscribers recently. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.